video, I'm going to look at acrylic paints and oil paints and their mediums. In this section, I'm going to talk to you about setting up a palette for acrylic painting. Uh, you can buy stay wet palettes that have a kind of foam and the paper on top. You can you can make your own stay wet palette. So I could, this is a piece of dishcloth. I could have used paper towel uh, and it's really straightforward. You just soak, soak that, spray it or soak it with water. So you're making a damp surface. Uh, and then tracing paper, uh, you could use, you could probably use baking parchment. I don't know, I haven't tried it. I use, try use tracing paper, okay, which is going to slightly absorb um, the water, but not be wet. So then when you squeeze out your tubes, it's going to extend your drying time. You don't want it so wet that you're watering down your paint, obviously. And as you can see, we're getting a bit of a curl. where that paper is getting uh, damp, but that's easily resolved. A little bit of masking tape. Okay, and that's going to mean that you can, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have your paints drying quite so quickly. Uh, and then if you have got some paint left over at the end of the day, either do as I do, I tend to just put, just wipe, wipe it on a panel and it's starting off a, a layer. Um, or if you're wanting to go back to it, then you can cover that with cling film. Some people use uh, do this system, but use um, kind of Tupperware tubs or ice cream tubs with lids, uh, and they will work on the lid, and then the tub goes on top. Okay, so flipping it over. You'll find a way of doing it, but basically you just need a slightly damp, not super damp, it's a slightly damp surface to squeeze your tubes and your paints onto. That's gonna make them last a little bit longer. In this short video, I want to talk to you a little bit more about paint um, and the differences between them and what you can get hold of and why they're different. Uh, all of the things you see in front of you here are acrylic based. We've been looking at acrylic paste, base, pastes, gels and mediums, and they're, they're all compatible with each other. OK, uh, I'm just going to move these over to one side because actually what I want to look at first are these beasts. All right. These are all. These are all acrylic pastes of different makes, okay? And there are plenty of them, okay? Plenty of different brands out there. Some of them are better quality than others. And um, when I say quality, it's usually not the polymers that makes a difference. It will be the quality of the pigment. So your cheaper ones will have probably more chalky pigments and other things in it to bulk it out, whereas the expensive ones are going to have expensive true pigments uh, with polymers. So that's pretty much the difference. These are just a few I have lying around in my studio uh, for all sorts of different reasons. Um, these are System 3. This is a good mid-range brand. Uh, I used to use this brand when I was teaching in colleges. Uh, it's fine. Um, I bought this one because I went on a course with Lewis Noble uh, and he, he uses this particular delicious avocado green. Uh, so that's what that one is. Uh, that's another System 3. OK, so they come in different packages, but that's the same. They're made by Dale Rowney. Um, so, uh, this is a sea white one. This is probably only available in the UK, sea acryl. Uh, I've got a lot of this. They were selling off this copper uh, and I particularly liked it as, a, as an underpainting that when I scratch through with my paintings, you can see the copper glimpsing through. But that's a fairly, that's a, that's a cheaper version of this. But it's fine. It does what I, what I need it to do. Then we've got Golden, okay, which really is one of the top brands, um, along with Liquitex uh, and Lascaux, okay. So, so there probably are other brands. This is what I've got in my studio. So these guys are going to be top of the range stuff on the whole. Um uh, and, you know, all the, all the companies will make their own brands. So Jackson's make their own acrylics, et cetera, et cetera. This is, as I said before, this is what I've got. Uh, so these guys are probably your top range. Uh, and they're, they're, they have better pigments in them on the whole than the, than the cheaper ones. Uh, this one, I particularly like these. These are quite cheap. These are by St. Elier. Um, and they're in these pouches. Uh, but it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice paint. The only thing I will say, it didn't happen with this one, is I took these off on a painting trip with some tubes of paint 
and the corner clearly the corner of one of the tubes pierced the pouch and it went everywhere okay but these are nice some people who have arthritic hands find it easier to squeeze these out uh, than than forcing their hands through a tube so that's it they're, they're, they're nice to work with okay so all of these are intermixable with each other they will have different consistencies so for example if i grab my palette i'll show you what i mean um so this this is this is a nice this is quite a you can see how that's gone to a peak okay so that's that's what i said before in the in the first one i think it was the first one of the smashing surfaces um a tube of a tube of this kind of paint okay is predominantly half of it is going to be pigment load and a few other things and the other half is going to be a, a regular gel okay uh, and that's the kind of effect you're getting that's a regular gel consistency uh, but they're not all that thick some of them are thicker than others i would say certainly in terms of thickness the golden is about on a par um, with the with the system three okay so if, they, if you're looking for that kind of consistency or viscosity uh, they're pretty much similar okay um and other men, others are softer you won't get any harder than this you won't get any stiffer than that that's as stiff as they go unless you add things to it but in terms of straight straight out of the tube uh, some of them are much softer so the liquitex uh, is this is called a soft body and it particularly is that you can see you could, it, 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 that would run if i held it and off it goes okay so that's that's quite soft for something that's in a tube it's described as soft body so that's what you kind of expect and the lascal is pretty similar look it's settling down okay so i don't know if it hopefully you can see i'll do a close-up photo where where the golden and the system three have held they're holding up the marks at the the the, the, the texture and if i if I let that dry, that's how they would dry. These are leveling off. They're softer. Okay. So it's worth bearing in mind. Uh, and the abstract, by the very nature of the Sennelier. Oh, actually, this one's gone a bit harder. Oh, no, it's me. <laughs> Obviously, that's a hard bit. Lovely. Um, look, that's softer. Okay. Okay, that's softer. Not as soft as I thought it was going to be. Okay, that gives you some idea. And then, of course, the cheaper ones. There's loads of cheap ones out there, and say they're intermixable, so that's okay. And, it, and that's all right. That that does that does what I need it to do, which is that I don't use it to mix. I use it as a a ground. Okay, so that's kind of what your tube paints are. These are all mix, mix, mixable, intermixable. But you know, all the brands I could mix these together. You can meet cheap, cheaper ones with more expensive ones. Uh, that's fine. The only thing, other thing I would say about this um, is they all have certainly the expensive ones, less so with the cheap ones. But certainly the expensive ones, uh, you're going to get some transparency. Uh, and those of you who know uh, know me and know how I like to work, I do like to work with a range of transparent and opaque paints and the transparency is going to be down to the pigment purely the pigment okay so for example this is trans it's called transparent this is transparent brown iron oxide the golden tubes are made with three black bars so it's a black and white printed metal tube with three black bars and they're painted on the top so if you can see the three black bars you know that's a transparent paint okay uh, that's pretty much how it works um, compared to for example it's a different type of paint but it's the same thing the same bars on here you can't see them the burnt umber in the golden range is not transparent okay so that's one way of doing it but all the brands will have some kind of symbol as to whether they're transparent or not and it's usually on the back says she uh trying to find it uh though it says translucent okay so it actually says it rather than a symbol often there's a symbol it's a circle or a square and it's full or not or chopped in half and it's going to give you some idea of the transparency okay um yeah can't find it i'm sure there are here okay there's a little tiny square on the liquitex a solid square which means this is 
this is an opaque color okay that's not a transparent color if that was an empty square or a sem or a, or a cross in half square that's going to be a semi transparent or transparent on their websites on their paint charts it will say quite clearly if they're transparent or not so it's worth having a few transparents in your collection of paints uh, certainly when it comes down to things like glazing now the other tube paint i've got down here are these ones uh, and this is a range by golden called golden open uh, and say so i've put i've squeezed some of the transparent brown out there it's not it's a very similar color uh, this is the burnt umber and it has the same texture to it uh, now i'm doing this on sunday afternoon um, uh, and the time is half past 12 uh, i reckon in about an hour hour and a half that would be dry that's not going to be dry until tuesday ah so much 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 longer drying time I use the golden open for my uh, monotype printing because you can roll it out on a jelly plate and it's going to stay there. Uh, it's not going to dry before you get you got hold of your paper. Uh, a portrait artists particularly like it because it gives you time to blend. Um, plein air artists like it for similar reasons. Uh, and I like it because actually you can do what I call a rub in glaze with it without it drying. Now you can buy retarders okay that are going to slow down the drying time of any of these uh, but the joy of the open is it's, it's all in the tube you haven't got to start mixing and get different blends and mixes and most retarders tend to be quite runny uh, whereas the, as you can see this is holding its peak so that's what the golden open open mean open is actually a printmaking term when we say that uh, an ink is open it means it isn't drying okay uh, so it's a slow dry ac acrylic uh, identified by the color of the tube okay so they're worth again one or two of those can be really handy and if i mix these two together i'm going to increase i've got paint all over there uh, i'm going to increase the drying time um uh, of of this one by mixing it with that one okay so that so they're intermixable okay so they are the what we call heavy stroke soft bodies all right so tube paints are pretty much those i'm then going to move on to um fluids uh i'm not aware or oh, someone i'm sure is going to correct me that there's anyone else other than golden who make a fluid oh i don't know so please do please do so a fluid as you can hear okay is literally a fluid paint um and it's it's runny runny so if i dribble that down there i'm sticking to my board it's going okay it's running it's extremely viscous uh it has polymers in it that will dry as it is uh, but it doesn't have the gel in it that's the difference okay a much much higher pigment load than a tube paint because basically, in a kind of rough way, this is 30 mil, a tube is 60 mil. Uh, one way of just getting in your head, though I'm sure it's not a pure mathematical thing, is, is a tube is half gunk, half, half regular gel, and half of the kind of thing that's in your fluid paint. Okay? Um, so that's, they're very highly pigmented. So even though they, or when you go in the shop you might balk at the price of them you're actually getting more for your money if you buy these and a tub of the soft gel and make your own so it's not as convenient obviously but you can make your own tube consistency and save mega bucks from buying the tubes okay i mostly i use these in a lot of workshops i do and tubes are great for going out plein air painting you know throw them in your bag you're good to go fantastic uh in my studio i mostly use the fluids and i get them in bigger bottles um because i want to choose the viscosity i i want to know that i can make that runny by adding something thinner i can go, go even thinner uh than i've got here if i add it to uh for example if i add it to um some gac 100 
is she not being able to get that out there there we go which is look that's even runnier than the fluid so i can i can add this to this and i'm getting a really you know we, we, we're really 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 runny runny paint that is um still has very high polymers okay so it's still going to be super sticky now you can water down any of these to make them runnier of course you can uh, but you might if you're not careful you can run into problems of adhe adhesion all right so you know if i added a lot of water to this i can make you can make any acrylic into a watercolor paint okay more than happy to do that um but if you put that on a non-absorbent surface, uh, like putting it on a heavy gel or a soft gel or onto a canvas that's just got gesso on it, for example, you are what we call compromising. I've split it by adding that much water to it. OK, I've 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 split all those glues up. They, they're not going to hold on to each other, the polymers. So uh, you're kind of making what we call an unstable surface. But if you start off with fluid paints, for example, I'm not having to water down the gunk. OK, there's plenty of polymers in here. I could still add some water to this. OK, but if I add some little bits of like GAC 100 or if I want it slow drying, I would use airbrush medium. OK, if I want to make it if I want to make it a slow drying thing and with the open range, you can buy some open thinners which are pretty similar to the airbrush medium. But I know there's, there's virtually no water in here, apart from a little bit on my brush. There's no water in here, but I've got a watery consistency. Equally, I can add that to a heavy gel or a regular gel or any of the gels and make it thicker. So for my way of working, I like to use the fluids. Then I can choose whether they go thick or whether they go thin, depending on what I mix them with. OK, so that's pretty much the difference. There are other brands that um, I don't use. The uh, I'm sure it's lovely. The Atelier, Atelier brand make uh, an acrylic that you can. These will all dry and you won't get them off. OK, Atelier make a brand that if you put some medium with it or some fluids with it, you can wake it up again. I haven't tried those, so I can't speak for those. I've no idea what they're like. Um, so there are other there are other brands out there that do other things than the normal acrylic. OK, equally like with the golden open. Uh, equally, I can mix any of these together. All right. So I can I can mix this fluid. OK, with this. That's no problem at all. It's, it's slightly diluting it in terms of viscosity, but it's certainly not diluting it in terms of pigment load. So any of these guys and any of these guys, you can mix with a, a regular or a soft gel or a heavy gel and you are going to extend the the thickness of it but you're certainly going to extend how much you get uh, and so it's, that's pretty much a good practice if you're trying to so for example here i've got some some regular gel and i can mix um any of these OK, uh, probably I would start off thinking in terms of a 50 50 mix. And that's that's this is just a system three, so it's not, a, you know, that's I've got double the amount by mixing it with some regular gel and bearing in mind a tub of you know, a three eight, a three fifty mil tub of regular gel is going to be about 12 pounds, 15 bucks or something. Um, I, I can't do the math of how, how many tubes of paint that would be, but I'm, you can extend it. OK, that's the point I'm trying to make is you can really make it go further. So I would say if you're working with acrylics, whether you're working with fluids or with tube paint, always have a tub of a regular gel or a heavy gel or a soft gel, depending on your preference for how thick you want it. Uh, and just have that on your palette and you keep going and that's going to extend your paints. And then, of course, your choice is how thick or thin you want them okay so uh, any of these thicker ones could be mixed with something like the GAC 100 to make it thinner they could be it could be mixed with um, gloss medium to make it thinner so this is some I know it doesn't come like this but oh okay so I can mix this with this for example just because it's nearby all right 
Uh, that's going to look, it's made it even looser, but there's no water in there, all right? So that's, that's made a really nice loose puddle. Equally, I could have gone for a heavy gel and made it thicker. I hope that's clear um, and that kind of helps you in terms of where, where you stand or what you want to do in terms of viscosity, what you want to do in terms of saving money, what you want to do in terms of, you know, what, what, if, you're, if you're starting out, what to buy. What I'm not covering on this particular one is what what colours you would use for different things. This is really about viscosity and extending it. So making it thin and making it thick. Uh, now, as I said before, the airbrush medium is going to make it slow drying. Equally, you can buy liquid retarders that are going to slow the drying time, or you've got things like Golden Open, which are thick, but will slow the, but are slower drying, and you can buy a Golden Open gel that you can mix with any of these to slow the drying time because most people say that's what it is about acrylics that really annoys them is how quickly they dry compared to oils okay just move this out of the way actually i'll just tear that off uh, finally on this section we have things called acrylic inks which are inks that have acrylic polymers in them which means that they when they dry they are water so waterproof they're not going to wash off you can't wake them up again OK, um, but they can be as thin as a watercolour and they can flow in the same way and you can use them in some pens. You could use them in dip pens. They behave like an old fashioned ink. Uh, I use uh, mostly Golden Open and the open brand uh, of ink, as I call it, is called High Flow. OK, so they're called High Flow Acrylics by Golden. And the same thing applies to the tube. Uh, you can see on the tube whether or not they're transparent or not. They have the same quality pigments as all the paints have in them, uh, but they have uh, retarders in them that are thin, that slow the drying time. Because obviously if you're using an ink, you don't want to clog your pen. You want it to stay, stay um, wet for a considerable amount of time. So um, they're slow drying. By the very nature of them, they're slow drying. Uh, but you can still add them to things. Some one or two I have a bit of trouble with, um, but on the whole, you can add these to the gels and paste to tint them. Uh, equally, you can flood your transparent surfaces with them, and I'm going to do that on my large painting. So I tend to get them because I use them a lot. Um, I buy them in these in these big ones, and again, you can see probably see better on here that this is transparent red. Uh, and they come even bigger than this, the black I buy in a huge one. So this has got the three bars on it. It says what it's suitable for, for pens and brushes, etc, etc. Uh, light, fast, flexible. What you're meant to do with these is shake them. So some people have used them and said, oh, it's really water. I don't like it. Give it a shake. Uh, there's little beads in here, as you can hear. OK, I wouldn't recommend you shake these guys, maybe just sometimes to turn them up to get the pigments going around. If you shake these, you're going to get foam. You don't really want any foam happening. Uh, but these guys are designed to be shaken because the pigment load settles to the bottom. Um, and then when you squidge it out, OK, that's how thin they are. And as I said before, you can use these in pens. Uh, you can, of course, you can use them with brushes, OK? but they're, they're really thin. You can dribble them on your painting. Uh, you can still add a little water. Uh, the rule I tend to have in my head, although Golden did do some testing and reckon you can do more, but the rule I have in my head um, is a 30% thing. So you can add 30% of water to any of these products and you're not compromising the binders in them. So you can still get it even looser if you wish to. If you add a lot more water than that, it's not going to be so sticky. OK, so be careful if you're using that, particularly on a, on a, a non-absorbent surface. If this is an absorbent surface like watercolour paper or any of the absorbent grounds we've been looking at or absorbent pastes, then you're fine. There's no limit to how much water you use. Uh, it's it's going to soak in. OK, it doesn't need to have something to hang on to. It's going to soak into an absorbent surface. Uh, there are other acrylic inks. Um, I know Windsor and Newton make a range. I quite like these. I don't know if these are acrylic or whether they're shellac based. Uh, these are, and I'm sorry about my pronunciation. I've, I've, obviously, I've got quite a few things wrong on, this, on, the, on these courses. I don't know how to say this. R-O-H-R-E-R-S. I'm sure Regina uh, uh, watching this will tell me. So it's rowers. 
I don't know. Uh, but these, these are lovely. And again, I've mixed these with um, their beautiful colours. Okay, these are gorgeous. I've mixed these with, with acrylics uh, and they're fine. They've, they've been fine. Certainly if you mix it with, again, a good, a good standby is this GAC, GAC 100 because that's a really nice, it's runnier than the, than the gloss medium. But, it, you know, you can mix that and we're off. We're good to go. Okay, and they can, they all, they can all be mixed in together. Okay, so you can get your nice flows, your nice mark making with your acrylic based inks uh, you can I have done if you mix the fluids with airbrush medium you can get a kind of ink isn't the pigment load isn't as strong okay you're kind of diluting the pigment load a literal but if you don't want to if you've got these like I said before you know my go-to is the fluids then I can buy stuff to change them so I can buy the heavy gels to make them nice and thick the regular gels to make them like tubes I can use the GAC 100 to, to thin them down and I can mix them with airbrush medium to make them almost very similar to an acrylic ink. They behave the same to acrylic ink. Uh, the, the pigment load is a little bit compromised, but on the whole, they're fine. OK, I don't think Golden are calling this airbrush medium anymore because I think um, that people feel it's only to be used with an airbrush. But actually, it's a really useful, a really useful medium to have. Uh, and it's really thin. OK. I wouldn't mix that. I wouldn't mix that with these because then you've just got too much retarder going on and you might have a lot of a lot of very slow drying inks. You don't want it that slow drying. Hopefully that kind of explains what all these paints do. Um, if you have any questions, then please email me. In this section, I want to talk to you about oil paint. Um, it's a nice alternative to acrylics. It can be used on top of acrylics, but you can never, ever use acrylics on top of a painting that's been painted with oil paint or oil and cold wax medium. And I'll talk to you about both those in a minute. But you can go over an acrylic painting. So, for example, this is the one that I've been working on in the Smashing Surfaces. Um, I could now coat that with this is an acrylic painting okay i could coat it with a clear gesso like this one there's others on the market but the clear gesso is going to give me a gritty surface okay a, a rough surface that's clear that the oil paint can hang on to okay now there's an awful lot of texture in here so i wouldn't overly worry about it but you, you don't want your oil paint sliding around or sliding off certainly on areas up the top here where this is a, a soft gel medium it's quite shiny and this is a regular gel medium you definitely need something gritty on there if you're going to work on this with any oil based media neither can you mix oil paints with any of the acrylic paste and gel so they're completely separate but you can have oil on top of acrylic paste and gels okay so this is a, a naked one on the series of the same thing uh, I could now um, coat this with the Liquitex and work into it with oil paint or oil and cold wax medium they're two different ways of painting by the way uh, and I'm going to quickly go through the materials for both uh, so these are the oil, some of the many oil paints that I use. I'm not overly fussy about brands. It's more about whether the colours, I like the colours or not. Um, because they all tend to actually be good quality. It's very difficult to get a bad quality oil paint. Uh, because basically an oil paint is mixed with pigments and linseed oil. So uh, unless the pigments are rubbish, there's not an awful lot you can you can really change and it's about will be about pigment load and how strong the pigments are um that gives the quality so i've always got a white on the go a titanium white there's always some reds i have a um a, a preference for uh transparent colors where possible you can always make a transparent opaque by putting an opaque color with it but you can't make an opaque color transparent and i like doing a lot of glazing uh, and building up layers of glazing and uh, so the transparency thing is quite important to me but it's a, it's a personal thing okay um, so these are nicely transparent this is the Winsor & Newton Indigo that's transparent Payne's grey uh, some of them are more transparent than others and they have a symbol on the side here okay 
that tells me this is a circle, a blank circle, that tells me that's transparent. They all have different symbols. This is transparent, it's got a, an empty square, as has this one. The turquoise shouldn't have, but it's probably got too mucky. Uh, this turquoise is not transparent. Uh, there, you just about make it out. It's got a, it's got a solid square. Uh, have I got another Williamsburg? Hold on, here we go. Yeah, right, so the, the alizarin orange has an empty square that's transparent. The turquoise has a solid square that is opaque. You may get one that has a half and half, like across, across diagonally, which means it's semi-transparent, okay? Uh, but there's a reason why I particularly like the turquoise, the favourite colour my colour of mine. So I've got these and there are other brands that I like. I particularly like the Rembrandt range from Tellens. Um, they have a lot of transparent colours. I don't have it yet, but uh, Winsor & Newton do a transparent yellow. It's quite hard to get a transparent yellow. Um, although I think I've got, oh no, I have got, I can see over here, I've got a Wins, uh, Will, Williamsburg transparent yellow, but I haven't tried it yet. Okay, so I'm not going to get that one out. Uh, and the Jacksons are very good. I tend to go for Jacksons white. So these are your oil paints. Now if you just, just want to use oil paint, as it is, okay, you could just squeeze these guys out and you're good to go, okay? You don't have to add anything to them at all, okay? You can just paint with them as they are, all right? You can mix them together, obviously. Uh, say this is a lovely transparent green gold, but the point I start putting some white in And actually, it's always best to mix with a palette knife. Then you don't end up with really gunky brushes. Um, there we are. Okay. It's always easier to clean a palette knife than it is a brush, right? So that's made that beautiful green gold. Look at that colour. That's made that opaque. Okay. And I could just carry on painting with that as long as I wanted to. Okay. Keep, keep going on that one. Um, if I want it thinner, I could add a, a, red, um, a medium. I tend to like Galkid medium, but you could use Liquin medium. That would be fine. Uh, you could add linseed oil um, to make it thinner and more viscous. Uh, so then that's pretty much it. Now, there are a few rules or a couple of rules with oil paint, the whole fat over lean rule um, that you shouldn't really put a thick coat on top of a thin glaze. But other than that, just I think just, just play with it. It is delicious. The downside is it does take a long time to dry, which means unless you stick to a quite limited palette, by that I mean maybe some blues and greens, all right? Or um, some reds and blues into purples, that kind of idea, okay? A limited palette, a section of the color wheel. If, you, if I then added in the green to this, at some point, I'm going to end up with a mud colour because I'm mixing all three primary colours together. OK, so a limited palette and you don't mind the time it takes to dry. Adding Galkid will speed the drying time up. OK, and there are other mediums that will speed the drying time up. I would suggest you keep to a similar consistency for everything. Then you avoid all those fat over lean rules. Um, doesn't stop you doing a bit of glazing when it's all dried off. Uh, so that's that's pretty much oil paint, really. Um, and it, it's lovely because it does flow. It, unlike acrylic, you can blend it. You can work on it for hours. You can keep going back to it. OK, so that's pretty much oil paint. Um, there's plenty of YouTube videos online about colour mixing and oil paint and everything else. Um, I, my way of working with oils is to mix it with a medium called cold wax medium. OK, uh, I really like this. And so the bit I've got here, let me get that off that brush. Uh, incidentally, if you didn't know, you're, you should, if you're working with both acrylics and oil-based media, don't use the same brushes. Okay, um, there's all sorts of, they will ruin your brushes and you won't get the best out of them. So, so make sure you have brushes that are for oil paints and brushes that are for acrylics and they don't mix up together. 
it's just good practice. Right, so this is some cold wax medium. Uh, this is a gambling rate brand. There's three or four on the market. And as you, hopefully you can see this oil paint. I'm not quite sure what you can. Uh, it's quite shiny. Okay, I could get some more out. I'm being ever so mean. Let's get some more out. I'll use the rest of that. Oh, here we go. Okay, it's shiny. Okay, it's oily. It's shiny. At the point you mix it and the recommended ratio is 50-50, at the point you mix it with cold wax, that's matte now. Okay, and it's become a kind of pasty consistency. It's become a kind of peanut buttery consistency. Okay, so that's pretty much how that works. Um, if I wanted to make that more viscous, I could add some Galkid. Okay, uh, or I could have some Gamsol, which, gam which is Gamblin's Odorless Mineral Spirit. Okay, or a mixture of the two. So there's a mix called 50 50. Now I've done five videos on uh, oil and coal wax painting, um, so I'm not going to I'm not going to repeat myself. This is really just so that you get the idea of the kind of paints you can use on top of your um, acrylic paste and gels panels okay to clean up uh, i like this one this is the bob ross odorless thinner obviously i get most of it off with baby oil or vegetable oil but the final clean this is good mainly because it's, it's quite cheap uh, they sell that in london and jackson's so that's that's pretty much it in terms of oil paint it can go thinner and i'll show you how you can get it thinner uh, once you've opened a jar of the medium whether it's this one or liquid uh, make sure you st so store it upside down uh, because it will begin to dry at the top. Okay, here, the top layer of it will begin to dry. And you'll, if you do it that way, you won't be able to get the rest out. Just little, So that's going to loosen it. Look, you see, that's much, much softer. Oh, gorgeous. Lovely colour. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with that now. Um, I'm going to go back to some painting. Um, so that's it. So you've got oil paint that you can mix with linseed oil, uh, with Gamsol, with Galkid, uh, or you can mix them. This is a medium, cold wax medium. You can mix that with any of the paints. This will then dry quicker. Okay, much, much quicker. Not quickly, but it will dry overnight uh, rather than weeks for oil paint uh, by adding the cold wax medium. Okay, um, I think I've covered it all. Uh, oh, and also with the cold wax medium process, you don't have the fat over lean. You can put glazes on top of thick, on top of thing. As long as everything, every layer has some cold wax medium in it, then you can play around as much as you like. Okay, that's oil paint. Okay, I think we've pretty much covered it.